What's up, YouTube? This is Sinta here. Coming at you guys with a brand new segment I'd like to um, give you guys called Stand Up Vanguard. Basically, this is a strategy segment where I bring up some scenarios and or some things that I've noticed in Vanguard. Um, talk about different strategies you can go about with them. And also get some viewer input because, trust me, no one's perfect. And usually, when you get a lot of opinions on something, you tend to see things in a different light. Now, this first segment is going to be called the conversion theory. And basically, what I want to talk about is what happens when you convert from one game to another specifically Vanguard and what I want to really talk about is bringing the mindset of one card game into this card game um, it's perfectly fine to use something that you've already done or an experience they've already had in order to make learning something new a lot easier in fact it's in our nature to try that and I'm not putting that down at all because trust me I came from Van I came to Vanguard from Yu-Gi-Oh which I still play of course and it really helped me get some concepts down really fast but trying to relate too much to Yu-Gi-Oh can be a very bad thing next same thing with other card games but Yu-Gi-Oh is what I know Alright, um, I'm going to be giving a specific scenario here. One that um, Yu-Gi-Oh players can relate to. Um, say, your opponent just opens the nuts. Like, everything on their field is like set up, ready to like, crush you. Then, you play that one back row guard, torrential tribute probably, wipe their field clean, and now they have an open field while you have a complete hand of just craziness. Now, in this scenario in Yu-Gi-Oh, especially now, if you do not extend to the point where you crush them now, they can pull a card from the top of their deck to change the game entirely. And that may be true, very much true in Vanguard, but there are some times when that it may look like that, but in fact, is no way near that at all. In fact, um, your opponent may want you to think that way. All right. Um, here's the scenario. It's your turn. You've got a incandescent line, blonde as hell. You have four damage, and you have two unflipped. Because last turn you used a used Zell's technique, well skill. Or to bring out Gareth. They brought the Gareth behind. Actually, you had a pretty nice field. But then your opponent managed to use Goku. Not only Goku, but a Kimnara, which is in the soul. And a Berserk Dragon to wipe all that off the field. And yet they survived at only 5 damage. They've only managed to give you a heal trigger, which is now flipped. Well, actually, the foot heel trigger is supposed to be over there. There we go. It managed to grab, get you just the heel trigger. So now you're at four damage, and now you're able to use that limit break one more time. What are you gonna do? Now, you notice they have a great deal of cards in their hand, but the cards on their field aren't exactly looking too hot. I've seen too many people do this right here. Put this, play this, not this, not that, but that. Awesome, right? Then they do this, that, and then they play these three behind. Stop. If you're a good Vanguard player or someone who's played a couple games, you already know something's wrong there. First of all, look at this. Zero shield, 15, 10. That's already 15 in a 
they are perfect being wasted so far. And also take a look. They have a pretty good number of cards in their hand. Alright, let's go ahead and play out the scenario. Your Zell is looking stellar. It's at one, two, three, four. Let's say you have a full field. That's five vanguards. I mean five rear guards. That's fifteen. Plus that that's twenty-five. Yes, that's twenty-five. Plus a boost by let's say the mark. You put the mark behind there. That is thirty-one. And you're gonna throw it at the vanguard. Throw as much as you can at them. Because of because um in Yu-Gi-Oh! it's pretty good, right? Um you wanna they left a field open with weaker monsters. But you notice something. They do this. You know what just happened? You lost. You know what wanna know how you lost? Because you threw your resources, your shield well not those. You threw your shield onto the field, thinking that you were gonna win, you wanted to boost your Zell, but then what? What happened? Things like a perfect shield or numerous amounts of cards in your opponent's hand are what's supposed to deter you from overextending. Because overextending in this game means that you're losing hand advantage to gain field advantage. But your field advantage can be blocked by perfect shields, like I just showed you. Trigger or other zero Ks. Five Ks in hand and on field. Because if they didn't play that, they could have used these resources. Plus let's see. And the resources in their hand to block that. If they chose to save their perfect guards, which they probably wouldn't have. And now you you just hit a Vanguard. You just use a Vanguard and possibly no triggers on the tech that wasn't going to go through from the beginning. Now say that went through, okay? That happened, alright? You still have other two other units to attack with. And you're gonna go all out. But guess what? Second bar. That and another twenty five shield in hand. They may have to use a lot, a few resources to keep that from happening, but guess what? They survived another turn. And because of that, let's see. You've allowed them this. Boom. Boom. Pop two cards. Pop one of your back row cards. If they so chose, or if you had a great two on the field, pop that. And boom. Now you want to see what's wrong with this picture? This is Dragonic Overlord. Dragonic Overlord is a scary card. We'll get to that in another segment. But basically, he's going to use this to destroy your front row and knock out your vanguard and make you lose. So basically, um, what I wanted to come across here, what I want to come across is it's okay to relate other card games to this but you gotta remember there are other elements in Vanguard that are different from that are different from other card games such as the ability to conserve hand, the ability to do that and also make field presence and also to account your opponents hand preservation and resources um, well this is my first segment um, if you guys like it let me know. And I also have a question for you guys. What are some instances when you guys have wished that you thought more about hand resources than field presence? Um, leave the comments in, to this question down below or hit me on Facebook and I will put my link there. And your answers will probably be put on the next segment. Alright, um, this is Sensei. Peace out, YouTube.